One of my favorite things outside of looking at new content and storyline information and stuff like that is looking at items that are considered rarer within the Call of Duty franchise. You may be familiar with some of the content that we've done here on the channel in the last year or so, talking about some rarer items like camos and weapon blueprints and stuff like that. But today I want to take a look at some of the rarer items of the newest introduction within the franchise, that being Black Ops Cold War. Some of these items you can't get anymore. Some are more so geolocked to specific regions of the world, and some you may just have to end up seeing with large price tags on eBay, but all rare items that you may not have seen before. As we go along, drop a comment down below. How many of these do you have? One, two, three, maybe all of them, maybe none of them. And as well, is there any item you think I missed that should be deserving of being on this list as of rare within Black Ops Cold War? As well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below if you are new to the channel. Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. And we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers. So if you guys would like to join the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's talk about these rarer items and what you may or may not have. Firstly, let's talk about some items that are obtainable, but still incredibly rare when it comes to how many players of the overall population end up having those. Firstly, the most prominent is probably that of DM Ultra and Dark Aether, the mastery camos that go kind of a step further within Cold War. Normally, we'd end up seeing one mastery camo for multiplayer so that when you get gold and diamond on every single weapon or their equivalents, because it hasn't always been those exact camos for the mastery of weapons, you end up getting that higher tier camo. This has gone on since Black Ops 3 with Dark Matter, then Black Black Sky and Infinite Warfare, Exclusion Zone and Modern Warfare Remastered. Then it went to Chrome Camo in World War II with later introductions that went all the way up to Chrome Tiger for further weapon prestige mastery. Then we saw Dark Matter in Black Ops 4 with ways to unlock it in MP, Zombies, and Blackout. Then we had Damascus in Modern Warfare, and now we have both DM Ultra and Dark Aether. Now, DM Ultra being a new introduction in terms of the design scheme and the Zombies Dark Aether being a replicant of the original Dark Matter Camo. This time around, we have unique paths to grind for unique separate camos with each mode and their own grinds for each of those camos instead of a split in challenges for the same camo like Black Ops 4 offered. Both in their own rights are considered rare to the overall population in Cold War, and while you may have become accustomed to seeing these camos from your favorite creators, streamers, and may even have them for yourself, you're technically considered a minority here with this as the percentage of players who do not achieve these unlocks far outweigh those that do. So if you have either of those, congrats, you're actually off to a really good start here at this list in owning some of the rare items. Next up in the category of obtainable but rare are the four seasonal completionist calling cards. Now, this going for both season one and season two for both multiplayer and zombies. As with Modern Warfare, Cold War offered up seasonal challenges, though not as upfront as the officer challenges were every single level. You actually only get one challenge per 10 levels now, and then you can work towards them. And also, unlike officer challenges, with a grind to level 1000, even after unlocking that last one, you still have the potential to earn usable XP after completing a challenge, not just hitting an XP wall like you did in Modern Warfare after hitting 155. But statistically speaking, very few have completed the Seasonal 1 challenges, which are now locked, and even fewer have completed the Season 2 challenges, which are still relatively new to players. Less than a week into the season, I know a few players that have actually reached level 200 already just by sheer grind, but completing those challenges, not quite yet. Season 2 will absolutely become less rare as the season goes on, simply because more people will complete challenges and have the time to do it. But again, in comparison to the total player base, you're still on the rarer side of the line if you've completed the Season 1 challenges for zombies and or multiplayer, and same thing with Season 2. Next up, we're going to talk about three Dark Ops Master Calling cards that are incredibly rare. This part of the discussion doesn't quite make a ton of sense to me this year, because in previous years, Call of Duty has rewarded players with some small customization token for completing every challenge in a given area of play, the 100%er. This year, though, there is nothing for that, and if you complete all 100% of your challenges in multiplayer, zombies, or campaign, you don't get anything in regards to a hidden calling card or anything like that, but what's strange is that if you complete all Dark Ops challenges for a given area of play, you do get a Mastery Calling card for doing that. So, whereas Dark Ops challenges never counted for or against your overall 100% or completion levels, this time around, they individually reward challenge completionists who do all Dark Ops challenges. Now, if you're not familiar with Dark Ops challenges, these may seem like an impossible task, and for some, I'd say that they kind of are without something like reverse boosting. Campaign is for sure the easiest of them. I actually ended up completing this. The mastery of these require only six challenges to go through, which is like three to four playthroughs of the main storyline, but if you really want to and you know what you're looking for, you actually can probably do that all within one go and then just replay the multiple endings, which is only like the final three missions or so, so you don't even have to play the full thing four times. Multiplayer, though, that's where it gets a little wild because you need things like the very nuclear, which is earning a nuclear medal, a 30 gun streak, with 21 different weapons over your career in Cold War. We know matchmaking, it's wild. That, to me, is never gonna happen for me. 
I consider myself a decent player. And statistically, I think I'm like in the 5% of players globally, but with skill-based and retention-based matchmaking in this game, that's just not going to happen because it tries to keep everybody as close to even as possible. So I'm not going to get those lobbies where I'll go on a tear like that, especially 21 times. Anyways, though, throughout campaign, multiplayer and zombies, if you have any of these, you're definitely in possession of some of the rarer customization items within Cold War. Now, let's talk about these ones that you may not even have the chance to end up getting anymore because they've either gone and passed the window of redemption, they're exclusive to some areas, whatever it may be. Firstly, I want to talk about the Tunnel Vision Calling Card and the Racer Uniform. This is a unique set that was available for Beck as an Operator Uniform and a Calling Card that you ended up getting as well, but only for Comcast internet users. These first two items, to my knowledge, actually can't be obtained anymore as they were part of the Xfinity Challenge for Cold War in Season 1, in which it's a little season-long tournament for Xfinity customers that sees you logging stats in an effort to win additional prizes like COD points, a TV, and even a full gaming rig. But the Beck skin and the calling card were available for Season 1 just for simply signing up for that. You didn't have to do anything past that, you just simply got a redemption code as an Xfinity user. But being that this was for Season 1, they're no longer available. Interestingly enough, though, it seems like they're actually doing this competition perhaps every single season. I only expected it to be the inaugural season or something like that, but when I went to look up references to make sure that I had everything in order for noting this video, I actually found out they're doing it again for season two. The rewards this time around aren't as cool, but for simply signing up for the competition again, you can quite literally do nothing and walk away after that. You end up getting an overclocked animated emblem and five hours of double XP. That's quite a nice little bonus on the secondary, if you ask me. So while I won't be competing in this at all, you best believe I registered for these bonuses, and you can too. Next, in a similar fashion, we end up having the Velocity Beck skin, which is for Sky Broadband customers, and a redemption code you can get for that. But Sky Broadband is only available, I think, in the UK. So this is very much so something that is limited to a very small subset of players and an even smaller number of those that actually have the provider that it requires. Similar to the Comcast thing, you can end up requesting a code from the ISP and inputting it in the same fashion. But this is actually the first one that we really see here that has actually made its way over to, say, eBay. But for absurd pricing, going into the ranges of hundreds of dollars for a simple uniform for Beck, which... I have the Comcast variation of it, and I don't even use that at all, so I surely would not pay $200 for it, but it shows that there may be some demand here for it, but again, with such a little and finite number of them available, if you end up having this, you're definitely in the rarer category. Now, let's talk about a smaller scale subset of items, that being weapon charms. There's a handful of weapon charms within this game that are actually quite rare. The first of which I want to talk about is the Knight Weapon Charm, which is available via the Pontix Pawn Play Along ARG game, which is now seemingly closed to my knowledge. So you may not be able to get this one anymore, but it is just simply the knight chest piece that will then hang from your weapon. Pretty cool. Again, haven't really used it all that much, but was something that I netted during the Pawn Takes Pawn Cold War Easter egg stuff before the launch of Cold War. Also was associated here with this was the Family Portrait Calling Card, so you can throw that in the mix as well. Those two came together. Another charm that is relatively rare is that of the Astro Charm. This one was actually exclusive to the Astro headset in-game content that came along with the Call of Duty branded A10 headset. This was a headset that was released in conjunction and in partnership with Call of Duty for Cold War's launch and actually is still live, so I believe you can still get this one, but it's one of those smaller promotion items that you may not think too much about. After that, I want to talk about the Clapback Monkey Symbol Weapon Charm. This was actually a Walmart exclusive, which I'm not entirely sure if this is still available, but it was something that was a little strange because you could only get this with in-store purchases of a specific Call of Duty Cold War shirt. I think for a time, you could actually get this code as well by doing online orders, but after a short period of time, it seemed like that was discontinued and it was only available within in-store purchases. But it was something that, again, was very exclusive to a small subset of items and is something you probably had to go out and get, which may not have been worth the time, effort, or money if you're not really into weapon charms. Another exclusive weapon charm is the Bangle Boom Weapon Charm, which is exclusive only to Nate Nacon controllers and a specific Cold War exclusive Nacon controller. Now, Nacon controllers are UK specific and don't seem to ship anywhere else in the world. So again, a very small subset of the player base would even have this available to them, but another item that is considered rare within the weapon charm category. And finally, the Bigfoot charm. This being something that was part of the promotion with Jack Link's beef jerky before Cold War launched. And actually, I think it's still live right now. So if you end up getting anything promotion wise from Jack Link's and Call of Duty branded items, you can end up still applying that to your account. 
But that's the weapon charms here. The more so cooler things, I think, though, that come down to rarity are some of the weapon blueprints. For this, we have a handful of different ones, and the first three we'll talk about are actually Onslaught specific. So again, a small subcategory of players, those who have PlayStation 4s and PlayStation 5s, can actually take advantage of this. Firstly, we end up having the Hellhawk QBZ blueprint, which is for getting nine chalices within Onslaught. Right out of the gate, whenever it came to customization for Cold War, there really weren't all that many great blueprints, if you ask me. The Confrontations weapon pack was pretty cool with the AK-47 and the M16, but when it came to it, I thought that this sort of slow burn Auburn Tiger design for the QBZ was a close second here with that. When you completed those nine chalices within Onslaught, you ended up getting the blueprint with the reinforced heavy barrel, steady aim laser, patrol grip, and jungle style mag, and it looked pretty good. The QBZ also being a weapon that I thought wasn't half bad within Cold War, especially upon launch. Then there also was the Crow Storm Type 63 blueprint for completing seven Onslaught chalices that again had a relatively cool design here on it of a matte gradient finish, but also having the design of the birds flying away. That was pretty cool as well. But then there was also the Primal Hunter Diamante blueprint, which was, I think, a more so timed exclusive here for this. I can't seem to find this one in game anymore, but that was available via Onslaught Chalice completion as well. So those were stuff that, again, if you had PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, you could end up getting those items for simply playing and completing some level of difficulty for that game mode. Then in other items that everybody could take advantage of, we ended up seeing that there was the Red Room Milano blueprint. This was actually a part of an Easter egg on Rebirth Island, the new Warzone map that came along with Season 1, but for completing this, for opening up the Red Room, that vaulted room within Rebirth Island, you ended up getting the Milano blueprint that came along with the Agency Suppressor, Microflex LED, Marathon Stock, Bruiser Grip, and 45 Round Drum. Now, the Milano isn't a great weapon, I think, by comparison within Warzone. It can hold its own, but I'd use so many other weapons before it. But in Cold War, it's not half bad. And within Cold War, it actually has a good build here right out of the gate. A lot of these attachments are pretty solid for what they'll do. So by simply completing that and again, earning that blueprint, you may have one of the rarer pieces of Cold War. Another one in terms of overall weapon blueprints was that of the Krig Hazardous Blueprint, which is one that I'm still a little mad that I didn't complete this to get it for myself, but it was a part of the Rebirth event. As with what we see right now with the Outbreak event, and we'll talk about these in just a second, the Rebirth event saw you with a dozen or so challenges pertaining to Warzone specific Rebirth Island challenges that if you completed that, you ended up getting the Hazardous Blueprint. That coming along with the Suppressor, the CMV, Mil Spec, Barrel, the Hollow Scout, Optic, the SAS Combat Stock, and the Foregrip. Overall, this blueprint's actually pretty cool looking if you ask me. I just wish the Krig was better in terms of Warzone play because that's where I spend a lot of my playtime. But for Cold War, it's absolutely a great weapon and a really cool blueprint. So bummer I missed out on that one, but talking about other event-specific blueprints that are still live right now, so make sure that you get them and secure these rarer items. That firstly being the Gray Matter Tundra blueprint for the Outbreak event. This one coming with the Outbreak challenges, completing all nine that go along with that. It comes along with the Wrap Suppressor, the 26.5 inch Cavalry Lancer Barrel, the Front Grip, and the nine round mag. On the Warzone side of things here for this with Cold War blueprints, again for another couple of days, the Teal Drop 1911 blueprint is available for completing the nine Outbreak specific challenges in Warzone. That blueprint coming with the 7.12 inch chrome lined barrel, the 12 round mag, and the speed tape. And the final thing we'll talk about in terms of rare blueprints and rare items here for Cold War is that of the Frozen Chosen M82. Now the M82 is not by any accounts my favorite weapon within Cold War, but the blueprint is, dare I say, iced out. I'll see myself out with that one, but we end up seeing that that comes along with a 22.6 inch combat recon barrel, infantry stabilizer, tactical stock, airborne elastic wrap, and the nine round mag. This was available by simply logging into Cold War during the holidays and getting the free bundle that came along during that time. It was randomized, not everybody got it at the same time, but if you logged in during that sort of holiday period within Cold War, you should have gotten it at one point. So that's something that is rare because if you have picked up the game afterwards, you didn't log on during that time, you may not have have it, whereas others may. But that said, that's going to round out our rare items here within Cold War. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Again, how many of these do you have? How many things do you think are ultra rare? What do you think would be added to this list if we haven't covered everything? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to so a single thing regarding all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. If you're interested in any of that, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me if you're on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best places to get connected with us on YouTube. Practice love on both those. So if you guys want to share up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.